Good morning. Doctor, good, good morning. morning. Oh my God, you amazing. You made uh, this too, sourdough. This one is from uh, fermented cassava or a tape yeah. from yeah. Bayam. And this one, is that correct? Is it gudeg? This one? It is correct. It is wow. gudeg. I am from Magelang and uh, gudeg is uh, a food from my hometown. So. Oh, from Yogyakarta. I see. Doc, I gotta be honest with you. I didn't know that this was gudeg, but it's amazing. But I couldn't tell that it's gudeg, but oh it's, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's just, it tastes Thank you. Indonesian. <laughs> but yeah. I couldn't tell what it was. <laughs> You're right. Sourdough with a local delicacy is twist. Yes. Right? <laughs> All right, doctor, let's continue. Uh, let's have a, um, um, a very interesting conversation this morning. When do we mix uh, the, uh, the, the uh, cassava right here or the payam? When you put it at the sourdough, the time? So, yeah, uh, the f fermented cassava is a, well, when you ferment cassava, it's a different kind of fermentation, right? Mm. There's a lot going on with uh, cassava being fermented too, and there's gonna be alcohol in it. So mm. you gotta be careful to put that into bread. Yeah. And uh, what you wanna do is that you ferment the bread fully and then you add it in the last step, oh, which okay. uh, we call it shaping. So when we shape the bread, we kind of snuggle all the cassava in it. Oh, okay, all right. So that's the technique that, uh, you know, that the, the doctor used. Uh, since we know that uh, cassava fermented or uh, familiar, we call it as a poem, is a fermented product as well. What uh, happens, Doc? I, I've got a, uh, I've got a, 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 a bit of question. Mm, mm. Say, if we put the cassava in when you're uh, bulk mm. proofing, mm. like the the initial stage of proofing, is is the product gonna turn out to be different? Right. Or uh, no? Right. Are the bubbles gonna be bigger? Uh, it's not. Uh, I, I I will be afraid that it's it's going to kind of harm the bacteria and the yeast that's oh, inside right. the, oh, the bread oh, dough. Uh, again, because there's alcohol in it and alcohol yeah. kind of kills a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, not COVID though, but yeah. <laughs> it kind of kills a lot of uh, uh, yeast and and bacteria that you want to have in the bread. So mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to put that too early because then the fermentation will need longer time. Okay. Uh, and when, when you ferment it longer, Actually, what you do is you break a lot of uh, structure in the bread because bread is really not only about fermentation but creating structure so okay. that it is strong enough to hold, I would say, the uh, respiration mm. of the uh, yeast and the bacteria in it. Wow, that so, is so, so you're cool. playing with live things right here, right? Exactly. This one. These are all alive before they were put in the oven. I would say, yeah, I would totally so, yeah. Wow. wow. And how yes. is the ideas yeah. coming? And the crazy thing is that it is made from something that is dead, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the idea of having the twist uh, yeah. and combine the local delicacies with the sourdough uh, that we know this is very popular in Western society at first, but you can put it local uh, taste mm -hmm. in it and the taste is amazing. I mean, who would have thought? Good. Who will talk good up? and also the poem <laughs> yes. because we know this is fermented as well. well right? What inspired you to put good up, uh, a savory meal, into bread? Yeah. What What's the logic behind it? How, how did uh, you... I, I, I just want to make um, a sourdough that is uh, edible, I guess, for a lot mm. of people. That a lot of people in Indonesia can enjoy it. And uh, the way that I make sourdough is that I also put a lot of local flowers. Uh -huh. We have great sorghum in Indonesia. We have great uh, black rice in Indonesia. Uh -huh. But I just feel like those ingredients are underappreciated. Yeah. And when, but when I include those ingredients in a bread, uh, sometimes people um, might not really like it just like that. That's why I put a lot of things okay. that maybe are more familiar for people. Uh, payam is familiar for them you know um, I mean if if you go to say Maluku you can have a uh, kopi kenari which is nice you put the, the, the ground coffee in right. it you put some yes. uh, ground sugar and kenari inside the, the sourdough amazing. this is really really nice too wow so since you mentioned a lot of um, uh, unique mix mixture kind of food uh, various kind of uh, delicacies as well 
do you ever made uh, something um, extraordinary in your sourdough? I mean, to uh, accept this gudak and this uh, cassava? Like people never thought about it, I but you made it. I think the most extreme bread that, yeah, uh, it will be, there, there will be two uh, breads probably. So the one is the, the one that I made from tempeh flour. So you, you dehydrate the tempeh. So you make the tempeh first. I, I like, oh. I love to make tempeh. So you dehydrate the tempeh and then you, you grind it into flour. Uh -huh. So you have tempeh flour and you mix it with uh, the bread flour and, wow. and uh, whatever you have in your recipe and you, and you make it into bread. It's, it is really nice. Oh, and I did the same thing actually uh -huh. with, uh, with insects. Uh, insect. Now I think uh, people are moving towards this, uh, yeah, this 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 alternative protein, mm -hmm. and the idea is that um, you know I, I travel a lot for my for my doctor job yeah, yeah, to yeah. Uh, East Indonesia, and uh -huh. in those places sometimes it is hard to find protein uh -huh. uh, when the sea when, when the tide is really high and the fishermen cannot go to the sea, okay. and the the option that they have is very very limited. So I try oh to, um, you know, to include more protein in whatever I make, just so that when I go there, I can, um, you know, and do how, something how does it taste? for them too. How does it taste, though, the insect one? <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. Uh, it's very, 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 very nice. Uh, really? Insect is very umami. It is very Ooh. earthy and nutty. Uh, yeah, so... There's a, a bread that reminds me of that insect bread. Actually, it is uh, in, in Germany they call it uh, Schwarzbrot or the black bread, or um, um, in Scandinavia they they call it uh, Rukbrot. So it's a very dense black bread, and mm. it's, it's it is so full of seeds and nuts. Yeah, and that's why it's it's it is so full of flavor. Yeah, um, very umami too, and uh, the insect bread is. Exactly like that. Wow. Wait, wait, no. With, with, with the insect bread, did you like ground it up into a flour consistency and mix it in with the flour, or did you cook the insect first, then you, oh. like like the good duck, or you just like plop it in at the last minute? I'm very curious what what, what you did with the insect. No, it's it's flour, flour. Oh, <laughs> I, I, don't, okay. I, I don't think I don't think I can eat uh, a bread with a uh, with, with an insect, insect inside of the bread. Oh my god! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You turn the insect into a flour. Yeah. And then you mix it like it's the same um, method that you do the with the tempeh bread. Mm. Doc, oh. you've made all these creations, so can can the public enjoy it? Like, do you sell these commercially, or is this is it is it just a hobby? Yeah. So when uh, when 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 there's no COVID and when there's no disaster, I'm gonna make make bread basically. <laughs> uh. Uh, and uh, but I I don't really do it daily. Uh, when I have more time, I will make a lot of bread. But uh, yeah, I, I will just announce it through WhatsApp. Um, and if people know the number that I'm using for selling bread, then we can um, you know uh, communicate through that. All right. Do you have any favorite uh, bread that you ever made, Doctor? Like your go-to sourdough? Um, I think it will be squid ink and cheese. Um, it's a very interesting bread. So it's sourdough and then you put squid ink. Um, and the squid ink is, oh. is an extract of squid ink. So it is a, it is very a concentrated squid ink. Uh -huh. And then you just kind of like brush it on top when during shaping. And then you put a lot of cheese in it. Wow. There are so many local uh, artisan cheese makers uh, who produce great cheese in Indonesia. Wow. And I like to mix a lot of uh, types of cheese in it just to get more flavors. And, and you know, and uh, the flavors uh, from the cheeses and the squid ink is just so, so amazing. I can imagine. I, I would love to try that as so well. So it's a black bread, right? <laughs> it's a black <laughs> Bread. But Doc, during your experimentation and your experiences, what are the biggest challenges in you know making sourdough as an edible, 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 edible food? Is it is it is it the recipe? Is it the flavor? Is it how to maintain the integrity of the bread? Can you share that with us? It is time. Um, it as making sourdough takes a lot, lot, lot of time. Um, all the breads that I make usually take at least 16 hours 
uh, oh. usually it can be up to 22 to 24 hours and you know just to have that time it, it, it's kind of like a scheduling practice for me because uh. you have to schedule everything like three days before actually mm. you, you're actually making the bread mm, mm, mm. oh wow so uh doctor we know that we heard that sourdough uh starters have a personal significance to artists as for debrina what is your starter like because we know this one this is a starter that Dr. Debrina is using, and this is from the United States as well. And so. this is more than 30 years old starter. Can you explain to us, Doctor, and share the story? Yeah. Uh, I, I firstly made sourdough when I was working in Bali, that was five years ago. And, but I did not really, uh, I was not really into making bread at that time. I love cooking. Uh, and until now, actually, I love cooking more than baking. But uh, I used to uh, work and study in the States. So there's a bakery, there's a famous bakery in Berkeley that is doing some giveaway starter uh, every Tuesday. <laughs> so I was there and I asked for their starters and I just mix it with my uh, starter from Bali. Oh, wow. We so like to name our starters too. Uh, uh -huh. When I first made my starter in Bali, uh, I named it Wayan. And uh, after being mixed with the starter from America, now it's Iwayan George. Iwayan George. George. <laughs> Hello, Iwayan George. How are you doing? <laughs> this one. And this is more than 70, 30 37 years? 37 years old. 37 years old. Is that correct, Doc? Thir yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Oh, yeah. wow. Doc, yeah. say if I make a starter Very like nice. today and use it uh, like the week after. Can you tell the difference between a really old starter and mm. a new starter? Flavor-wise. Uh, it's really, I would say it's really hard to tell unless you put it under the microscope. Uh, I have a microscope by the way at home. But um, in terms <laughs> of making the bread itself, it really is depends on the artist. You know, it, it really de it really depends on a lot of things, not only the, the, the starter itself. You need to get the right timing, you need to get the right handling. Right. You really need to get all those things to make a good bread, I guess. Uh, but a good start, a good and strong starter definitely helps. Ah, that's the use of the starter. So you have to be careful if you want to be a Bread maker, you have to be very pay attention with the starter that you. So you do it, we, you treat Iwayan George like a baby. You feed it every day. <laughs> like a man. Do, do, do. Like a baby. Like a, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta feed it's it. It's thirty-seven <laughs> years old, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. How do you treat this starter, Doc? Is there any special treatment um, for I, him? I feed it. Yeah, I feed it daily. Uh, when I uh, when I will make bread, then uh, I will treat it. Uh, I will. Eat feed it uh, three times in a day, just like a human, right? Oh and when I don't make it, when, for example, if I have to do my doctor job, then I will just put it in the freezer or in the fridge. Uh -huh. And it actually, it can last for longer. Ah, okay. So he, she truly, truly know how to take care of this man right here. So, make, so she can make a nice bread. Correct. Like we can enjoy today. So, doctor, uh, could you please share with us, uh, or probably the starter who they want to make a bread as well, what makes a good sourdough bread, according to you? Oh, first of all, uh, food is food, right? So I think uh, it has to taste nice. It has to oh, yes. uh, feel nice too. Right. Uh, right. But. Uh, I think making so uh, is more than just the eating experience for the, the sourdough makers. Mm -hmm. uh, it is really all, well. You said you mentioned about it is being therapeutic, and it is really therapeutic. So wow. I I've, I met a lot of people who kind of got help from this activity of making sourdough, especially during the pandemic. Right? It was wow. a crazy year uh, yeah. it was two crazy years actually uh, last year and this year and uh, well I, I'm, I'm just glad a lot of people actually uh, found some uh, escape in this uh, sourdough making and mm. and I, I just think that this is also how we humans connect to food right 
and again when we talk about bread it's really something that is so basic so humble mm-hmm. but I, i mean it is so humble you can just throw it away if you do finish bread but it is so irreplaceable right from a mm. uh, hundred years ago until yes. now yes. people just cannot say no to bread exactly we have keto we have paleo but sure. people still looking for a bread right? yes that <laughs> Doc, is one so last true. question are you ever going to sh- share your, your recipes with us like publish a cookbook <laughs> Dr. Debrina's bread. Okay. Right. Is, is that is that yeah. is that up there in your dream? I I, I do. Oh, you I do? do? I I I yeah, I uh, in uh, I have um, <laughs> an Instagram for it. Actually, I I have two Instagrams for my breads. But uh, I always share recipes in all the posts that um, oh. that's in my Instagram. All right. Nice. All right. So people can learn from you to make a uh, unique sourdough as well with the local uh, delicacies, uh, delicacies twist with the sourdough or probably if you get lucky you will uh, collaborate with this uh, man right here i'm gonna steal that <laughs> you that are one's going home with me no no no, no, no. <laughs> don't steal it it belongs to dr Debrina. thank All you right, so doctor. much doctor such an insightful talk exactly we learned a lot today and thank yeah. you for the bread these are very delicious very delicious we really enjoy it thank you so much doctor and thank you. we'll see you next I'm time i'm so happy that you guys like it bye thank you doc bye